there's no, no, no speed. speed control. It's either no speed or lopsided. try to give a little bit of a picture of last night, but before I do, I want to remind us of what it says on the archway as one enters the Mystery Center at Delphi. And it says, O human, know thou thyself. Last evening, one of the major themes, in case it didn't come to you in your recapitulation last night, is that <clears throat> when we look at a computer and the software in the computer, and I can expand this to robots and artificial intelligence, you will find that although we are the creators in it, of it, there is something that the computer is not. If I, maybe some of you know set theory, but if I were to have a, 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 a poster paper and I put all sorts of dots on this paper, and then I drew a circle around some group of the dots, and I said, that's group A, or that's set A, then what is not set A is everything else. So the not operation is fundamentally important in all computers. All software uses it. All software uses the logic operations called and, or, or not, or combinations of those. A computer does not know how to do arithmetic, cannot do multiplication or addition. It fakes it. It is a new form of Maya. It does this by having truth tables, and what they're called, and the AND operation needs both sources to be true for the outcome to be true. The OR needs only one of the sources to be true. And then you can put NOT with it, and most memory is made from what's called NAND gates, which means not AND, or NOR gates, which means not OR. Now, don't worry, you don't have to know all of this to get the rest of this, but I'm bringing it up because when we look at computers, it's helpful to know that it's built on the NOT. And the NOT helps us to see what is the human. You see what I'm saying? What is the human goes beyond what the computer is. So whatever you can say that computer can do, there's something about that computer that is not human. N-O-T. N-O-T, not with a K. N-O-T. <laughs> and as you can see that not human, it helps you to realize what I am. And it leads us to realize I am not mineral only. I have life in me in which I'm related to the plant kingdom. But I have more than that. I'm related to the animal kingdom. And I have something else beyond because I can reflect on what I know, and that brings me to self-knowledge, and hence to Delphi. O human, know thou thyself. And this guy, Rudolf Steiner, says, this is the cosmic word. O human, know thou thyself, which has existed all of time of earthly condition and will exist throughout the earthly condition. <laughs> so what I tried to give last night from a cosmic perspective 
is what the computer is not, so that we can understand what the human is. And it's there to challenge us, challenge us deeply, so that we become strong in spirit. We do not become strong in spirit if it's given to us. And what's been given to us is body, soul, and spirit. And we are spiritualizing those through what Steiner calls the fourth principle, the ego, the I am. And it's working upon all of those. And when this earthly condition is done, we will have achieved a ninefold human being. We will have a threefold in body, a threefold in soul, and a threefold in spirit. We will be a reflection of the nine hierarchies. Now, of course, I didn't say all of that last night, but <laughs> you should have got it, right? <laughs> so, So we did look at the path to Jupiter, which is the next planetary condition for those who were not here last night. Uh, not here, but at the talk last night. We looked at previous conditions and how even astrophysics today talks about three prior conditions that we had to have gone through in order to have heavy metals such as uranium and lead. And these three prior conditions had human existence on it, but not human like us. We have to be really careful in words here because people are going to get the wrong idea. I'm talking about a stage, and you can hear Shakespeare here, if you know Shakespeare, about this being the stage. We are a stage today where we are the beings on stage. And the spiritual beings have created the stage for us. But we don't find them on the stage today. As in the past, people did experience the spiritual world directly and then more and more indirectly until finally it was experienced only as the manifestation of the divine. And until we got then into the 15th century, we started seeing it as just dead and calculable. So we looked at this word calculable universe and the incalculable <laughs> universe in regards to a being that we call in anthroposophy and in Zoroastrianism, Araman, also known as the Prince of Darkness, as opposed to Lucifer. So we looked at the fact that evolution has peaked, and we are now falling into devolution. And what does that mean? Well, it means that things are going to be withering and falling apart. Our bodies and the earth go hand in hand. There are a number of indications I gave from Steiner, but we'll look much more into those tonight. And then we looked at Araman's incarnation, and we compared that as if you were a, an initiate back around 3500 BC, and you knew that this glorious being who is the bearer of the light, who is going to bring us our <coughs> Gnostic wisdom, who is going to bring us the arts, culture would also be the being that would lead us astray. How are we going to prepare for that? How are we as mere minor mortals going to meet this incredible being Lucifer? And if you can imagine how awful that felt to the initiates at that time, how are we going to do this? And yet, we can be encouraged because they did succeed. And so now when we look at Araman's incarnation as the balance of the Lucifer incarnation, what we have to face for the rest of Earth time is facing this being of Araman 
and wresting from him the gifts that he brings us so that we can go on to Jupiter through the gifts of our mind. So this preparation for the future, we looked at that. We looked at Ray Kurzweil's singularity, that vision that many people like Ray have had that the artificial intelligence community shares, that the brain is, is where our consciousness is, but it's just a machine that we can reverse engineer. When we do that, we will be able to make machines far superior to this brain of ours that's fragile to all the biological aspects. And then we looked at <coughs> prosthetic limbs and other sorts of ways in which human beings will be on this slippery slope of merging with machines. And for some, it was a very scary picture. For some, it was a very disturbing picture last night. And I think some of you went away saying, is Andrew saying Yahoo to this? Is he saying this is good? So tonight, I'll try to answer that question. And so we're on the second one. We're going to look at technology, and in particular to human sexuality. And no, I won't show any pornographic pictures. <laughs> and then um, what I'm trying to do now is we move from the cosmic meaning of fixed stars, in a sense. Tonight, we'll be looking from the perspective of the planetary conditions. And then on the workshop tomorrow, we'll be looking at our modern time, the fifth, fifth post atlantean epic, or cultural age. And terminology, I stumbled all the time in my early years in anthroposophy. Translators sometimes use the word cultural age. Sometimes they'll use the word epoch. Sometimes they'll use time or period. It's, it gets very confusing. And so throughout mine, I will call the post-Atlantean ages pacas for post-Atlantean cultural age. So if you see the abbreviation PACA, I'm referring to post-Atlantean cultural ages. And I try to use the word epoch to mean the seven, and I'll, I'll have a slide coming up on this, um, the seven epochs of the human uh, destiny. So you can see what's coming up on Saturday, tomorrow. I don't know if we'll get through all of this, but it's going to be uh, a major attempt. And if you can't make all of it, it's fine. Come to what you can and duck out when you have to. It's perfectly all right. One thing is lunch is bring your own. Um, we'll have some goodies if you want to bring something to share with everyone. Feel free, and just to get a sense, so I know how many goodies to bring, mm -hmm. raise your hand for a moment if you plan on coming tomorrow. And, oh my, that's great, okay. Um, good, we'll have a, a good working group. I have prepared stuff for each one of these sessions that are not the Eurythmy ones, and Gabrielle back here has prepared the Eurythmy sessions. But I'm not going to take you through like lectures. I will have stuff to guide us, but I want it to be much more interactive tomorrow. And your questions will you'll find us flowing out as we are going through this. And I will pose questions. So it's almost like a study group for this tomorrow. And I will have some answers to things, obviously, but um, most of it is just direct it, and if we get through all of the slides, or just two, it's fine. We'll just go with the flow with what you need to have covered. And I mentioned this last night, but for those who weren't here, this is where you can find all of the lectures. They're up there for free as PDF files. As PowerPoint, I would put them up, but they're just too huge. And the other thing I've heard is if you put up source files, people might change something and then say, this is from Andrew Linnell, mm -hmm. and there's something in it that I didn't say. So PDFs are much harder to manipulate and that kind of stuff. So 